Welcome to uh, this press conference with uh, the Excellencies, President Cyril Ramaphosa and uh, President Mbola. You're very welcome. Um, welcome to the ministerial delegations and uh, welcome to the ladies and gentlemen of the media who are very well rested after the leave you uh, assigned them earlier, Mr. President. Uh, I will now like to invite uh, President Ramaphosa to, uh, to address us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Seal. I hope you have indeed rested a bit as the media. Your Excellency President Omaro Mbalo, Honorable Ministers and Ambassadors, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have just concluded wonderful discussions between the delegations of South Africa and the delegation from Guinea-Bissau led by His Excellency President Mbalo. South Africa and Guinea-Bissau enjoy a really cordial political relations and this visit has really given us an opportunity to consolidate the relations that we have had over a long time. And our relations stem back from history when uh, we were involved in the struggle against colonialism and also the support that we received from Guinea-Bissau. One of the ways in which we will be extending these warm relations between the two countries is to enable our various delegations to delve deeper into various key agreements on very, very important sectors such as health, defense, mineral resources, as well as our broader diplomatic relations that uh, were established way back when we became a democracy as well. And looking forward, we will also be working on the areas of energy and uh, agriculture. President uh, Mbalo and myself are greatly energized by the bilateral discussions that we have just had. And these discussions are going to be a precursor to the visit that we will undertake to Guinea-Bissau, having been kindly invited by His Excellency President Mbalo. South Africa, during our discussions, reiterated its condemnation of the attempted coup that took place in Guinea-Bissau in February this year. We emphasize that this runs contrary to the efforts to silence the guns on our continent. We also expressed our shared concern at the resurgence of unconstitutional changes of government in various parts of our continent. It is of great concern to both our countries that conflicts are continuing in several parts of the continent. It is our moral and political duty in our continent that we should work together with other member states, members of the African Union, to achieve an Africa that is free of conflict and be able to provide the citizens of our beloved continent with safe and secure environments. Obviously, greater economic prosperity should underpin everything that we do, and this is what we intend to focus on as we deepen our relations between our two countries. Our goal for this state visit has been to deepen trade investment between South Africa and Guinea-Bissau, and we have mandated our respective ministers to work to achieve this. We have communicated to my brother, President Mbalo, and his delegation that we would like to see South African companies being able to do work 
in Guinea-Bissau as they develop their country from an agricultural point of view, infrastructure, and in a number of other areas. And similarly, those Guinea-Bissauan companies that may want to come and operate in South Africa should also be able to do so. We also expressed our gratitude that Guinea-Bissau has provided a very conducive environment for South African companies that currently do work in Guinea-Bissau, and we thank them for this. We see significant opportunities for cooperation in the economic sphere, and we'll be encouraging both companies on, bo uh, from, on both sides of our two countries to take a keen interest in the opportunities that prevail in both markets. Your Excellency, the peoples of South Africa and Guinea-Bissau have long-standing ties of solidarity, as I said, born of our liberation struggles, and we welcome you here with open arms on behalf of the people of South Africa, and we thank you for the manner in which Guinea-Bissau supported our struggle for liberation. And let me also thank you for having been one of the heads of state who called in the wake of the floods that we have experienced in KwaZulu-Natal. Your call to us was heartwarming. You pledged solidarity, and you also passed on your condolences. We'd like to thank you for that, and that to us is what solidarity is all about. So thank you very much for your solidarity. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you, Mr. President. We would like to start by thanking once again my brother, President Ramaphosa, for the invitation and the warm welcome. We believe the South-South cooperation is the key for our bilateral relation. Economical budget diplomacy is the answer to straighten our historical relation because you already say we are the freedom fighters because if we see during our colonialism during apartheid here you are the same is why today we have the common history this is the reason i come with this strong delegation of several ministers and we identified the strategic sectors to cooperate. Example, commerce, health, energy, defense, and agriculture. Also, we believe it is the moment to implement the commerce free zone agreement of in, in Africa. Mr. President and dear ministers, I have South Africa in my heart. We are brothers. Yes. And uh, you are my sabari too. Yes. I don't go to stop to say that all the time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But well, we're still waiting for the Lobola to come. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. President. You're most welcome. Thank, Thank you, you. Smali. Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> Thank you, President Ramaphosa. Thank you, President Mbalo. Um, after what you've shared with us, there are only four questions left to, uh, to ask about uh, this visit. And uh, we have our colleagues of the media to take care of those four questions. Kai, I can see you're itching. Hi, good day, uh, President. It's Kylie Shekumala here from SABC News. Uh, I know, Mr. President, this is quite a very big issue, the current conflict in Ukraine. And I just want to get your input, because as South Africa, you have been calling for the UN Secretary General to be a central player in this regard. So what do you make of the recent meetings that you have seen 
in Moscow and Kyiv as well, between President Putin and President uh, Zelensky as well. And just a quick one, President Mbalo, with you know the current issues around drug trafficking in terms of security and defense, how would you want South Africa to assist your country in this regard? Thank you. Want to go first? No, go first. Okay, I'll go first. <laughs> no, we have, as South Africa, been calling for negotiations. And our call for negotiations is based on a principle. We have always held the view and continue to hold the view that conflicts should be resolved through dialogue and negotiations. And I guess you could say that we were well taught by the great Nelson Mandela, who always felt that conflicts should be resolved in that way through dialogue and negotiation. I've had the occasion to speak to President Putin and President Zelensky, and uh, their discussions and meetings is something that we believe is this, a step in the right direction. And in my discussions with them separately, I stress that it is through negotiations and dialogue that this conflict can be resolved. And we're really pleased that that is now underway, and we are hoping, wishing, and praying that it should lead to an agreement uh, that will lead to the cessation of the hostilities and the end of the conflict as well. So that the lives of the people, may I say, on both countries and largely in the Ukraine, can be restored and peace can find fertile ground once again. Thank you. Thank you. I, <clears throat> I think this is very important to, to say Guinea-Bissau, you know, we have bad reputation for this issue on the past because if we see Guinea-Bissau, we are far away from South America. But some of traffic of drug before I come president, there was the, uh, there was in Guinea-Bissau, but today I don't think if we have this pandemic in Guinea-Bissau because we already fight them to go back where they come from. But it's important also to change with South Africa your experience because you are a big country. And if we are big, we have more experience to know how to deal mm. with this kind mm. of issue. Yeah. I think uh, it's why we are here today to change this experience, not only about to fight the drug, but in all the areas is important. Because in myself, I believe in South-South cooperation. cooperation. Thank you. Thank you, President. We had one questioner with two questions. So we have two questions left. Um, <laughs> Karin? <laughs> Good morning, President. I'm Karin de Plessy. Let me not be naughty then. Um, let me just ask one question, maybe a sweeping question, uh, about security challenges. And perhaps um, both presidents could speak about it, but to President Mbalo, because you're from West Africa, we've seen, I mean, you mentioned that there was talk about the coup d'etats that were sweeping the, the, um, the region. And there have been predictions that there could be more coup d'etats on the continent because of COVID and the wars, the instability in the, in the world. What, what was your discussion around that? How do we address that as, as Africans and as the African Union? Um, yeah, so I, I won't ask about the terrorism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. It's true, but today we work in, because everybody condemned this military coups and change change without of democracy today in west africa unfortunately we are only area we have this kind of change 
But ECOWAS, now I think we already found solution. To Today in Guinea-Bissau, I have some troops from ECOWAS country. Nigeria, Senegal, Ghana, Ivory Coast. And then we're gonna do the same for another countries to change the military to understand and then to make in the head of this colleague we can't change the constitutional to of coup. Example, if you see in West Africa by history, I think it's only two countries don't know the coup d'etat, Senegal and Cape Verde. Yeah. Senegal and Cape Verde. And others, they all they know what what mean the coup d'etat. Yeah. Unfortunately, but it was in the past, of course. But today, I think the last um, attempt that was in Guinea-Bissau. We're going to fight them. And then coronavirus also going to fight this military who want to me the coup. <laughs> <laughs> the COVID <one. laughs> Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, President Mbalo. I think... Uh, as a continent, uh, we have a lot to learn from our previous experiences. And we also equally have a lot to learn in the way that ECOWAS is dealing with these matters, much as it is experiencing a spate of these coups. But the determination and the decisiveness of the leadership in ECOWAS is something that stands out as a very good example <clears throat> for the rest of the continent. And they've now moved on to another phase of uh, dealing with these coups. As uh, President Mbalo has said, they are going to, as a region, to be deploying troops that are going to be ready at any given time to deal with those who may want to perpetrate acts of violence and attempted coups and so on. So I think the continent is moving and maturing to a state where tolerance for coups and acceptance of coups is now a thing of the past. The AU has taken a very clear and uh, strong position on this and I think it sends a very important and strong message to those who would want to perpetrate coups, that they will have no place to hide. And uh, action will also be taken against them. Uh, so I think we, we are moving to uh, a stage where we will see more, less and less coups on the continent. And uh, we, we hope that begins to spread throughout. In SADC, we've been relatively fortunate. We've had great stability. Uh, the only sense of instability has been, you know, in Mozambique, for instance, in Cabo Delgado with insurgents, and Lesotho uh, has been largely resolved uh, and moving forward with their own elections and the reforms. So that, in many ways, uh, behoves well for greater stability not only in our region, but for the rest of the continent. I do believe that the guns should be silenced as soon as we move forward uh, as the African Union as well. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellencies. Uh, thank you, Ministers, for joining us. Uh, thank you to members of the media. We celebrated Freedom Day yesterday, and we are now all invited to exercise our freedom of movement. Thank you. Thank you.